Where did the acting come from? How did you, you were young, you were very young, right? You were like a kid, must have been I eight. I remember I was 14. 14, so how did that happen? Um, I was living in a van with my dad. We were close to being homeless, and he said, what do you want to do? Well, we're going to be starving soon. Do you want to try acting? I went, sure, but how, you know? And um, he, call, he got a call for a heron commercial, and he went down there for 50 bucks, and they needed a kid. I did that, and the girl said, hey, I like your kid. I got a friend who's an agent. Why don't you send him down there to read for her? Wow. I did. Started going on calls and started getting it. It was just like that. It was nothing I ever yeah, thought about. Mm. Like I, and I also want to say that I never, I never watched movies. I never grew up, you know, watching films. Just something that happened. It's something, you know, I got a hold of this camera and I just started figuring shit out and just trying to get my ideas across. I was living in the trailer park for about a year, and I've, I've grown up in trailer parks and my whole life. Trailer parks, vans. So I've been familiar with the people, and I'm one of those people. And. I want to make clear that I'm not some person that came out of a condo and moved into it. It came to a trailer park, shot a film, and left. I, I, the the life you see the people living is what I live every day. And you don't want us to go in there either, do you? No, I wanted to. I wanted to keep it. I see it as a holy place. I see it as a place where it's just it's my my studio basically, and my place to create. And I just want people. I just want magical projects to come out of there and and come into people's lives without them. I feel that if they see me sitting in a couch in my trailer, that, that works on your brain if you see the film back. You know, you're thinking about me in your head while you're watching the film, and it changes your perspective of, of the film. Do you, do you, like, rehearse, or do you... No rehearsals. There's no script. I mean, I have, I have pages in my hands, but I basically, the way I've always worked is I just feed them the lines, and then they say it. The scene in the, uh, in the bar, for example. Right. Exactly. How, how, how do you do that? That's something you kind of you wrote it, and then you you would shoot one direction, feed the line, right, and then and then move to the next direction, yeah, and feed the bartender his line. I just shot it like I go about it like every scene. I just mm -hmm. move real quick, and I, I'm just throwing out lines, grabbing it, and trying to get the footage so I could fuck with it in an editing place. Did that guy fuck real shit? Did O Henry? O Henry is that his name? O Henry, yeah, that's real. All the shit in my films are real. They're never fake. The guy behind the trailer. All real. Um, yeah, I, I try not to fake anything. Uh, if you see people vomit in my films, I try to make them vomit. Um, try to let them just drink themselves until they throw up. Now, do these folks, are they, do they sign releases? Do you sign contracts with them? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, of course, yeah. Right away, I tell them. I give them a release and say, here. And I give them a, a six-pack of beer, whatever they drink, or um, usually 18-pack of beer, and... Uh, or uh, whatever they like. They just show up to have a good time, basically. That's the whole, the way I started was just for a thing for us to, in the trailer park, there's really nothing to do, man. So we just wanted to have fun and make a, and make films and keep ourselves and our minds occupied. And, and of course, I'm just trying to get my stories out. What is it that you hope to accomplish? Um, my, my life and death um, shown on film in a way, you see my mind living and, and dying at the end of my life. You'll see it die somehow on a film and some kind of idea. Now, what made you this way? What, what, I mean, you're obviously trying to figure out life. You care. Why do you think you're different from Tom Hanks, if you are? I just, I just believe that I'm on, um, I've been uh, put here on a course. Um, some kind of, um, there's some kind of pull happening. I've just always been a person that's kept to myself when I write. And I've always done that. I've always been interested in playing music. And from my music came stories. And, and I've just been, stories have always engulfed my head. And I don't know, ideas engulf my head. And I, and I feel every day that I wake up, I, um, a, like just something on me that I must make a film. And I need to do it, otherwise I, I need to jump off a building. That I, feel, I feel like the only thing, one of the only things I'm good for on this earth is to create art. What do you shoot on? What? I shoot on a, um, I wish I knew the model, it's just a, a Sony digital camera. I went into... So it's mini DV? Or? It's mini DV, yeah, and I went into a store and five years ago and almost walked out because the guy showed me it, I had no idea, I hated technology, any kind of it, mm -hmm. and he showed me the camera, and as soon as I saw it, I went, goodbye, I'm out of here. My dad kept saying, hey, hold on, man, you're going to learn how to work this fucking thing. You know, I couldn't even fathom how to turn it on, I didn't want to touch it, mm -hmm. but I just picked it up and... 
My first projects were all black and white because I couldn't even figure out how to fuck. I threw the I immediately throw books away, instruction books because I hate them, and I and I shot black and white films because I couldn't figure out how to turn it on to color. You know, <laughs> finally Trailer Town came along and I figured that out, and I just now I mean I'm still learning that you know how to work how to get different things. Why my movies change looks, you know, because I'm finding new stuff and. Yeah, just some kind of Sony digital camera, you know. How did you hook up with him, or how did he find you? Um, I just went to... Uh, this is for Cabin Fever. Yeah, so. it's another audition, and I didn't know anything about him. We just met, and it was for a whole different part of the movie. Had he seen any of your movies? No, he'd never seen them. And, wow. And I, and we, I got the part, and I went down there. And when I was down in North Carolina, I kept telling him, I just, I got this film called Trailer Town that you really should see, you know. And he kind of farted me off, like... And I don't blame him, you know. He thinks he's, you know, some actor's made a fucking movie. What could, you know, could this be? But I finally got a, a chance to go over. To, we became friends, and I went over to his place, and I showed it to him. And in the first ten minutes, he was fucking on, blown away. He went, "This is a masterpiece." <laughs> That's great. Yeah. He loved it. Yeah. And he, see. And he started pushing it and like showing it wherever he went, you know, to people. And he's the reason I, I met you guys. And I. Wow. Yeah, he's the whole reason this movie's coming out. Are there other mainstream people that you've shown your films to? Or you... Well, Adam Rifkin ah. is the guy that I worked with before I did Detroit Rock City. Right. And right. he produced my first film. And um, he's continuing. Actually, he's doing this thing I'm doing now called the Soup Trilogy. He's producing it. He's giving me a thousand bucks a film. And um, so we're working together again. So he's uh, he's a guy that makes, I guess you would call it mainstream movies. And, Definitely, yeah. And uh, he's a huge fan of my films. He just did a. He went to Chicago a, a little couple days ago to talk to. I guess the film school he went to, and he, he told him if there's one filmmaker to watch out there, it's Giuseppe to check out his movies and just the way he's shooting stuff and working. You know, I think it would help a lot of people who want to make films. Yeah, it's, it's a way to do it. Get hold of some people. Get hold of that, that that simple equipment, cameras, a little editing spot. Get your people together and fucking go for it. You know? Yep, make your own damn movie. Now, when you're editing, what do you use for editing? How do you Final, edit? Final Cut Pro. I edit right in the trailer. I burn the right to DVD right in the trailer. So everything I do, I got a I got a music little music four track studio set up. I do all the music there, any kind of voiceover shit I need done. Um, and I I shoot them there usually or around the town I live in, and I edit right there in Final Cut Pro and burn it to a DVD, and I got it all right there. You know? Wow. How much did this movie cost with you? If you don't mind talking about it. Uh... Trailer Town cost a thousand dollars. So from soup to nuts. From the, from what from what came out of your brain to what we have, a thousand dollars. Wow. That's and that and that's the way I continue to make films now. All my films cost a thousand bucks. You probably have an enormous crew, right? There must be. Like a crew? Hundred. You mean actors? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah technicians. Crew. I mean, you have <laughs> such, a, right. such a big budget. I mean, how my many technicians people? are? You're looking at it. It's me. The, the built-in sound I use. I use no boom. I just use the sound of the camera. The directional, it. use the thing that's like what I'm doing what now. What you're doing right now. Oh, wow. And just boost it the fuck up in Final Cut Pro. And then uh, lighting is all natural. And uh, whatever I can get my hands on the room. And that's that's it. But you do things in the editing where you play with the action. I mean, you certainly did it in Dribble. And, uh, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, I use, I use shit like that. I'm, I'm, I guess my favorites would be slow motion. Um or double timing shit. Like that's what I'm doing a lot now on my stuff. Is I like to double time the images and what is double timing? I'm sorry. Just speeding up the image to it to just doubling it where everything's oh. happening. If if I, if I did this, it would happen like this. You know, mm -hmm. it happen like people are moving like this where their actions are you know just real mm -hmm. fast. And then and then I dump the the voices and dialogues over that. So they're not really you know they're talking, but they're talking and it's all out of whack. And like I kind of like that now. And I've always liked slow motion and. Um, uh, stop and go like animation I've used a lot actually um, I did a film called Tater Tots where my t the Tater Tots narrate the story and they dance and one gives the other Tater Tot gives the other Tater Tot head and shit in one scene and they mm. and they move like stop and go and I'm actually now experimenting with doing that f with people in my films and um, of course I love subtitling if Trailer Town I, I believe is the only American film subtitled in English you know what I mean? That is English. Yeah, right. You know? That was quite unique. Um, I just That just started because, yeah, I, I guess the films that I were watching were like, you know, I love Fassbender, and I just got used to seeing those subtitles. Something like that got in my head, or I just, and, yeah, I just I just. So the subtitles watching. are part of the aesthetics. It's not that you were worried that people couldn't understand the dialogue. No, but it, it became, I mean, maybe that became an added bonus that I thought that every 
fucking line in Trailer Town was something beautiful and poetic and needed to. I wanted. I didn't want anything to be missed, really. Mm-hmm. So I, I thought that it became like it started to become a book. That people, you're you're reading and seeing this book that's moving and happening, and you're catching everything. You know, you're seeing all because a lot of it's poems and a lot of the people are talking in rhymes. Right. Which is a big thing that I like. That is a thing that I wish we could all do in our real lives. Is if I came up to you and said, "Hey, Lloyd, I just went down to the corner. I got a, you know, I got a boner, you know, whatever." But any, you know, any kind of. I wish we could talk in like poems and rhymes. I, I find that interesting. Getting back to the, you know, you've had the experience of working on mainstream projects, movies. Have, have you learned something from those, or any, or? or... That's, a, that's a hard one to say. I mean. As far as when I go into a, a shoot that I'm acting in, I immediately, I, that I'm always wait, I immediately get to the trailer somewhere that they've given me, and I start writing ideas out, and I, I know my shit from, I, I look at the shit the night before that I'm supposed to act, mm-hmm. and I go on the set and I do it, and I just do it in my way, and then I get back to my ideas and I leave. So I never really, I guess, Whatever I've seen on it, it doesn't really apply to my my kind of filmmaking. The mm-hmm. way they run cameras, the way they operate with people, the way they interact with the actors. I mean, it has nothing to do with my kind of filmmaking at all. If you're seeing one of my films, you're like I said before, you're seeing a, a life happening and a death happening. You know, I'm, I'm living and dying in these movies. Yes. You know what I'm saying? In sure. a Hollywood film, it's more of like you know we're trying to get a group of people together to make bombs go off and. Or like you know, watch our favorite stars fuck. What if some if 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 uh, you know you were offered uh, an assignment, you know, start skin hutch, would you do it? Um, um, or Independence Day Part Six or something? Right. Would you? Um, boy, I, I I'd have to say no. You know, I, it depends if if I could do something like I, if I could write it or something and do mm-hmm. something that's completely. The opposite of what they expected, and that'd be well. If they enjoyable. if they gave you total freedom, you you yeah, I'd, I'd probably be into that. You'd make a fifty million dollar movie or something. Fucking a, yeah. why not? I find everything humorous. I'd like to end up in Mexico doing Mexican soap operas one day. I mean, just different kind of things like that entertain me, you know. So I like that. So I'm not I'm not closed minded about doing any fucking thing, you know. And what about? Um, other influences on you? Uh, are there artists in other medium? Are there poets? Are there? Um... Well, I have to say now, when I when I first started getting getting aware, like I I never saw any kind of movies until I was seventeen, or was into any kind of reading, or into I, I just really grew up around music. That was kind of the thing that I was aware of. Like I was aware of obscure bands. I would say. Um, then when I started watching films, like I said, Fassbender was the was the biggest first one for me. A film called I Only Want You to Love Me. Oh. And it was a phenomenal one. And Cruel was the second one I saw, which was still one of my favorite movies. Um, I love the like the artificialness of the sets and the um, the he was a big I, I love the way he his dialogue was as there was always things that you wouldn't normally hear coming out of people's mouths. It was something like it was a new way to talk, like I was talking about it. That mm-hmm. was interesting. I'm always writing, constantly. I never stop I, I if I could, I would never take breaks. I would just continue a continuous stream of making films. Like my dream was and I still might do it, I want to do it, is to go around to every state and make a film in the state and have like a fifty states series, like Make 50 films in one year would be like great for me. That's, that's kind of what I want to do within like five years. I want to do that. I like writing, you know. Anyway, I can get that out, whether it's film, through music, through novels. I'm, I'm always doing constantly those three things, and they all kind of just come together, you know. And uh, yeah, but now I'm just influenced by the trailer, the setting, the people, and these characters I have. I'm just, you know, I, I, I want to take them, I want to go with them until their personal ends of their lives, you know. I want to follow them and create stories for them and keep them like in a good place in their mind and and they I can see it on their they, they love doing it it's something for them to do at the, at the age of 80 years old Lloyd you know for to be wanted and to be you know people have put me in situations and having something to do every day that's that's wild and different you know they love it you know I, I hope to have that if I if I ever made it to that age you know that people want it. It's great. Yeah, it's, yeah, great. it's very Most moving. Most people don't have that. They get thrown in a home and kicked in the face. Yeah, right. You know. Thrown away. Right. 
So that's exciting cool. for them, and then right. we we love each other. It's you know just great. Mm -hmm.